And there we go. <gasps> Welcome to Engage VR. This is an instructional design and training and education software in virtual reality. This gives the designer, myself or yourselves, the ability to set up different environments for your learners to work in. Currently, we're in a very familiar uh, lecture hall format. I've chosen this because it's familiar and it's easy and I am currently being the sage on the stage, so we're doing it this way. Um, what I can tell you is that we can do all kinds of things within Engage VR. Right now, I'm recording this session, and at some point, I'm going to switch out, and you're going to see this session from my perspective. Um, Engage has several different methods and several different forms, lots of effects that we can add to it, lots of um, uh, scenarios, lots of uh, layouts, lots of places. Um, the lecture hall, again, I chose it because it's a standard format for a university setting. There are many others. Uh, if you're engaged and you're using the uh, pro version, there are even more options. Um, again, I just chose something that was familiar since I'm talking to all of you uh, like this. Thank you, and uh, we're going to move on. I'm going to keep... I'm going to... I'm going to do is I'm going to go... We're going to go someplace else. Let's take a look at a different location. Let's take a look at um, one thing I want to tell you is using Engage. If you're going to go someplace, you should and set up something. You should preload things. Um, without preloading it, it it can become a problem. So we're going to go to the Titanic Gallery. I've preloaded this, or I've used this before, so it should load pretty speedily. Um, and it is coming up. You can see right there that the Engage logo is coming up. We're going fading to black, and here we are. Okay. Um, this is one of their setups, okay? Um, it is basically a museum with 3D pictures of the Titanic. Um, I encourage all of you, if you get a hold of a VR device, you should probably come and take a look at this. I'm going to come back here and show you something that I think is particularly very cool about this Titanic setup. I'm not a big fan of the Titanic or the movie or any of that stuff. Um, I'm not overly interested. However, with this, with the curated uh, pictures, you could have students come in here, you give them a subject, and you can have them put their own pictures on the wall. Um, <coughs> pardon me. And that gives you an idea of some of the power in a very basic setup like this. Um, this is That's the, the first assignment I set up. This is a little herky-jerky today. I think my uh, GPU is, is overactive. Let's see if this comes up. Ah, yes, you can see. And I think you can start to hear the music here. It's pretty soft on my point, but you can hear him playing it. And if you're a fan of the movie, there's Leo, and I don't remember the actress's name. They're right there. So there you go. And I think that's the theme song playing in the background. Um, as many times as I was teaching and my students at the time had seen the movie, particularly my female students, had seen it eight or nine times. I, to this day, still have not seen it even once. Okay, so I'm going to pause um, my recording here, right there, and you can see how there's little little people walking back and forth, and again, I don't know if you can hear the music over my voice, but it's there. Um, you can see, I don't know if you can see that officer, um, in at least in a digital format, the guy's looking for icebergs, uh, let me point out to him and everyone that, spoiler, uh, he doesn't do a good job. Um... And again, back here, there's a... I know there's someone playing a violin. I can hear him, but I saw him the other day. It is, uh, again, kind of just cool stuff that's, you know, there. Um, but let's go to a different a different uh, place. Uh, another, another location, if you will. Um, we've done... Titanic, I would like to go to the World War One gallery, which is very much like it's this is the same gallery, but there's one thing I wanted to show you at the back of this gallery that um, that is pretty cool that we have the potential to set up and uh, have our students do. Again, it's a it's a curated 3D space. Um, they've added a field piece that's a sop with camel over there, and there's pictures of um, their their digitized 3D pictures that are on the, the wall here that are pretty cool. Um, but I really want to show you something that's um, pretty amazing that I didn't realize. I mean, I guess I should have, but it's there. And again, this is something for students to do. I wouldn't 
set this up for my, you know, as as a as a model for my students. Oh, look, there's a zeppelin up there, and I just noticed that for the first time. That's pretty cool. Um, so you have this kind of this World War One um, thing. Uh, documentary narrated by Kenneth Branagh, and I couldn't figure out the first time I was in here how to play it. And then I saw these vignettes over here, and what they are is you can play, you can select an episode, and you can sit on the couch and watch. Now, is that good pedagogy for a teacher to do? Probably not. However, if our students created something like this, and it was accurate, that would be, that would be a, a great Thing for them to do. Sorry, I'm hearing the planes and I'm looking up and seeing the Zeppelin. I'm looking for the biplanes. All right, let's see another, oops, wrong one. Let's see another location that I think is um, pretty cool. Now, there's a bunch of locations. You can see that they're here. Some of them are better than others. Um, we'll definitely stop in the 3D, the 3D uh, 360 room. Um, this is a personal favorite of mine because without you know, it's 50 years since the first moon landing this year, this summer. Um, the Saturn V rocket's always been a favorite, and you never can really get a good idea of what the scale is. We're at Launch Pad 39 at the Kennedy Spaceport, and what's behind me, and I haven't looked at it quite yet, is is a Saturn V rocket. Now, there, I want to talk about locomotion in this. There's two types of locomotion. For those of you that have mentioned VR sickness and you're a little worried about it, um, you don't want to use this motion, which is my left hand on a joystick moving like this slowly, but this is uncomfortable unless you spend a lot of time in VR. Um, what you want to do and what a lot of games and, and, and other instances have is called teleport. And what you do is you click a button and it gives you a spot and you release the button and you're instantaneously there. Um, in this particular set up, we can go all the way out here, all the way off the launch pad, and all the way out to one of the water, the water, the, uh, water sources, I think this might be a, a lock source, a, a liquid oxygen source, and turn around and you can see the Saturn V up on the, on the pad getting ready to go. It's, it's very cool, it's very impressive. From this distance, you really can't tell. I know I kept my back to it intentionally. Um, and we're going to go closer and closer as we go through here. It's a little herky-jerky. There there we go. Because we're down here low and there's a, a ramp there, I think there is an issue. And we're going to go take it slow up here. And again, it's only herky and jerky because I'm making it be. I, I really don't. I have very good VR legs, so to speak, so things like this don't bother me in the slightest bit. But as I get closer, you're starting to see how tremendously huge this rocket really is. Um, we're going to go up underneath here, and then I'm going to demonstrate an effect or two, and you can see what the effects look like. Now, I didn't realize, um, being the lay person I am, the lay rocket scientist um, that I am, I, didn't, I never realized that... Uh, the Saturn V wasn't, you know, just kind of sitting on the platform. What's going on here is this, these are the blast. Oh, I didn't know I would fall. No, well, that stinks. Um, so this is a, these are the Saturn V en engines, and this is a blast. This redirects the blast, and I didn't realize that these existed uh, until I was in this, into the, in, into this scenario, or in this room. We're going to go up up onto the platform here, and hopefully I won't fall this time, because that was kind of funny. Um, and we can go up on the la launch pad, and here we are. And now you can see that we're close to the launch pad. I'm sure you can hear some of the fluids, and you can see I'm just standing and looking straight up at this thing, and it's, it's tremendous. Okay. So, Joyce, who cares? Well, here's what we can do. Now, there's all these images, these 3D artifacts that we can add to anything, and I'm only seeing animals right now, let's pull out the cow, and look, I can put a cow on a Saturn V launch pad, kind of cool, kind of stupid, um, but there are tons of them, there's tons of these effects, and there's different categories, there's audio, let's see, um, there's a fire alarm, so if you want to train for a fire, you can do that. You can set up these things to train 
in, in training for, for almost any scenario as long as it works with what they have. And again, the pro version you'll have, you'll have a little bit more. Now search, let me go for search, and we're going to search for fire. And what comes up? Oh, I didn't mean audio. I meant all of these. So let's go to effects. Fire. There we go. So we have fireball, large fireball. Let's take large fireball. And we can put large fireball down here. That's not quite a big fireball. That's that's kind of a medium fireball, guys. Let, let, let's, let's see if I can find something bigger. Flamethrower, huge. Oil rig fire. Ah, there we go. Fireball huge. There we go. That's that's more like a Saturn V engine. So we can put this here and call it up again and put it underneath here. And again, it doesn't look like much because we're very close to this. But, and we're in the middle of it. But if we go out, and again, you can see my shadow. Hi. Um, it now looks like Either the Saturn V is going to take off or it's going to blow up. But either way, for a, a, a training perspective, this might be the way to go. Um, there's an oil rig setup where you can look at oil rigs and they can set up fires. You can train evacuation procedures. Uh, I'm sure that school teachers, um, we could probably wind up doing, you know, active shooter situations as much as I love talking about those. Um, but we can also destroy all my IFX. Um, destroy all IFX immediately. So I can go back and I can find a flamethrower huge, flamethrower large, and put that randomly there. Um, an oil rig fire, put that like right there. And, you know, you can do all kinds of different scenarios and you can add these effects in there. And it's not just for us to add, our students have availability to all this stuff too. Um, so, again, they're able to create all kinds of different environments and and let their creativity go i mean we could add a little bit of poisonous smoke here let's that's so joyce is going to go stand in the poisonous smoke um and if this was an active if this was a scenario you know obviously i'd be uh i'd have some problems going on right now um so and again there's other effects um this is one i was playing with the other day um, we'll put that down there. So again, you can really train and add stuff on here that you would never be able to do in real life and in VR. Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg with this application. This is in, again, VR is in its infancy. This application is pretty new. Um, if you can purchase other 3D effects, I'm sure you can put them in that, that are outside their catalogs. Um, if you have the pro version, you have uh, access to other things. Um, and again, the only thing that's limiting you is your imagination. Um, one other thing that I wanted to make sure that I showed you as an instructional designer. Um, you can make notes to what you're doing. Um, you can record what we're doing. You saw that earlier. I can play media in here. IFX. I can add... I can add video screens. So even if we wanted to talk out here about what was going on, I could sit here and add a video screen and have a, an audience of people, and we could have a PowerPoint. Yes, we could load a PowerPoint directly on there and run it from 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 a cloud drive. Okay, so you could be sitting here and pointing out that this Saturn V is on fire. I'm standing in a toxic cloud. There's a tornado over here. What are you gonna do? Um, you got some problems. Let me destroy all these IFX. So you have that, and there's one more thing I want to show you before we get going. So in Engage VR, for us as IDs, as instructional designers, we have the ability to create quizzes. At the end of your training session, at the end of whatever, you can have quizzes. You can set up the questions, you can have them in here, and your users, when they're done, will submit them from the in view and go from there. And you'll receive, you'll receive statistics about Pass percentage, average marks, completion time. So as an ID, we have a we have we have our, our, our stuff built in. And you have a questionnaire, exam, feedback form, quick quizzes. You have these things built into this tool already, so we can gather uh, uh, we can gather in intake data and outtake data in the same application. Um, for us, that's that's massive. That's great. Um, I want to point out there's a, a camera, um, so I can 
flip the camera, hi, and take a picture, take, do a little selfie, uh, do a little narcissistic selfie, um, and that saves to my document folder, folders. Um, your users can do the same thing. They can take pictures of what's going on and say, hey, listen, we see this, that. So there's any number of ways to go on. Um, I keep seeing this. It's a little weird seeing yourself come up. Uh, one last thing. I want to go to the, the 360 room. I haven't been there, but I've seen this demoed. So I figured we should go there and see it. Uh, I know some of class members and other members inside our class have talked about 3D 360 videos. Let me show you what a 360 video looks like in VR. Um, we, we see them online. They're great. You know, you can find all these. These are YouTubes. Um, these are on YouTube. Uh, some of these are uh, available um, on through PBS, things of that nature. I'm just looking for something that's really kind of out there. Okay, let's do this. So we're in a 3D theater, and it's going to play a 3D video. Um, now, this is what you're dealing with. It is just loaded up. It's coming up, and we're going into... I guess this is a Nat Geo Explorer. This is their their logos and stuff. Um, 360 spitting distance to descent into a raging volcano. Sounds exciting. So here we are, standing... The volcanoes in Vanuatu, South Pacific are some of the most dangerous in the world. The deadliest is the Benbo, the world's biggest emitter of gases with a depth of 300 meters. Nice. What's up, peeps? Ula Lohmann and her husband, Sebastian Hoffman, set out to climb deeper into the Benbo than any before them. Along with filmmaker Jochen Schmal, they begin their expedition on the island of Ambrell. And you can get an idea that this is an immersive In the video. Months prior to the expedition, the region has been afflicted by a devastating cyclone. And I can tell you from a neighboring volcano that if I didn't have my VR legs, no I might be a little dizzy. I wouldn't be nauseous, but a little dizzy. This that cars and planes for beginners is not is is generally not a good idea. But not a beginner, so not a problem. With well over two dozen expeditions to Ambrem, Ula is close to the villagers of Lalinda. Don't mind me, I'm looking at their hiking the gear. Island makes everyday life difficult. On a whim, the winds can affect rain acidity, render drinking water toxic, and destroy harvests. Sounds like a good time. I find it funny that they put the VR camera up and had people walk back through, so it's staged. of equipment and supplies. Fortunately, the adventurers can rely on the local community for support. Hmm. Half of the village pitches in to help carry the packs up to base camp on a five-hour hike to the foot of the volcano. This guy ran up here ahead of time and planted this camera, and now he's going back through. And he's going to have to run back down and grab the camera. Who's the guy, the last person grabbing this camera? By the way, I'm a joy to sit through in documentary with documentaries, too. Approximately 17 kilometers in diameter, the rim of the caldera marks an abrupt end to the jungle. The team crosses the ash plain, which feels like they've landed on an entirely different planet. Eh, I don't know about that. This. Standing on the edge of the precipice. The crew looks into the magma's fiery glow for the first time. Engulfed by ashes and the roar of the lava pool, there is no longer any doubt that Benbo is still alive. So those of you that have fear of heights, this is where you're going to check next out. Day, the crew embark on a 150 meter long abseil down the first of three terraces leading into the inner crater. Any changes in the weather can turn their route into a deadly cascade of rocks and acid rain. So, former climber, I only see four pieces of safety. Is she going to blame him? Is that what's going on here? Okay, that's not so bad then. Emanated by the lava and unstable gases are ever more palpable. With temperatures of approximately 1,000 degrees Celsius, wind poses a constant threat as We're on this guy's backpack. That's kind of cool. ...can put the crew's safety in jeopardy.
Finally, sacrifices anybody? Anyone? Sacrifices? Find themselves standing 60 meters away from the lava lake. The ground shaking beneath their feet as the team look down in awe. I feel like my name's Joe. Time and remain for hours. A moment these explorers will never forget as they feel the forces of nature more vividly than ever. Um into the heart of our planet. Again, this is what a 360 video should feel like. You should be immersed in it, not just scrolling through a screen. So there you go. Um, this is what a 360 video looks like when you're actually immersed in 360. It's it's amazing. It's impressive. Um, there are other, other videos. There's a bunch that have won some 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 awards and con this year. Um, so yeah, there there's definitely great stuff. So to finish this off, we're gonna go back to our lecture hall. And here we are, back in our lecture hall. And again, I wanted to just point out that you can put these effects anywhere. So our buddy the cow, I can put him right there. Um, let's go to the last. I haven't even seen what's on the last of the page. Oh, a fire truck. That's cool. Oh, it's pro. Darn it. Do, do, do. Office chatter. Medical drape. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, again, these are, these are only limited by your imagination and the 3D effects that they have in there. You can import other 3D effects. Um, and again, this is some place where your students can create whatever they want. They can, uh, use simple things like this and just practice their speaking limits, practice their, their performance or, or performance, practice presenting um, PowerPoints and presentations without the fear of, of other people watching. Um, they can have their, their group mates come in via the net and watch them, and everyone can work on their project like this. Um, I'm big, and as a teacher, I, I've, I've often stressed that I like to have my students um, be in front of groups and, and speaking. Um, that way I'm not doing it all the time and they are prepared for for being in front of people and talking to people and not have that that anxiety um, and and I've, I've done it to some success but I feel like I would use this as a tool for them to practice you know at home and they can send me the file and I can look at it or I could watch it from home or during my lunch or whenever or they could just simply record it and send it to me and I can watch it whenever and I can go from there or if you have a student that is unable to come in for what Ever reason um, they have an IEP or a 504 that doesn't allow them to be in school for an extended period of time I'm standing right now you don't need to be standing the student can still give the presentation record themselves send it and I can still give them a grade um, based on this um, so there's any number of things that can be done um, I want to sign off with saying thank you very much um, these are my hands and Again, you're seeing from my perspective what I'm looking at. It is uh, a pleasure talking to you all, and uh, have a good day. go. Welcome to Engage VR. This is an instructional design and training and education software in virtual reality. This gives the designer, myself or yourselves, the ability to set up different environments for your learners to work in. Currently, we're in a very familiar uh, lecture hall format. I've chosen this because it's familiar and it's easy and I am currently being the sage on the stage, so we're doing it this way. Um, what I can tell you is that we can do all kinds of things within Engage VR. Right now, I'm recording this session, and at some point, I'm going to switch out, and you're going to see this session from my perspective. Um, 
Engage has several different methods and several different forms, lots of effects that we can add to it, lots of um, uh, scenarios, lots of uh, layouts, lots of places. Um, the lecture hall, again, I chose it because it's a standard format for a university setting. There are many others. Uh, if you're engaged and you're using the uh, pro version, there are even more options. Um, again, I just chose something that was familiar since I'm talking to all of you uh, like this. Thank you, and uh, we're going to move on. I'm going to keep, I'm going to stop recording this, and now you're going to see this from my perspective. I've cut in, and we're going to eliminate this logo up here. We're going to stop this, uh, let's save that. Let's go to here, and we're going to stop that altogether. And what I'm